Mindy Brashears and I am the Associate Vice President for Research at Texas Tech University. I do research and I also serve in an administrative role uh, in the Office of Research. I really want to encourage you to stay with agriculture. This country needs the next generation of leaders in the ag industry. I got to serve at the USDA and I saw that many people who are making decisions related to agriculture knew nothing about it. We need you, we need your generation, and you have to stay in this industry to step up because tomorrow you're going to be the next policy makers, the next CEOs, and the next leaders that are making decisions that feed the world. Uh, yes, everyone talks about the food supply chain, which that is the proper terminology. But one thing that I learned, uh, especially serving at the high levels of government, is that it's actually a food web chain and <laughs> not a chain. Uh, there are a lot of different points in it. And what I mean by that is that something that happens in one industry impacts not only the next industry in line, it also impacts other operations. And one thing, uh, one example I want to give is when I was at USDA, we had, um, we were working with CO2 stunning of animals. And when some of the major industries shut down, CO2 was a byproduct. Well, that industry wasn't necessary, necessarily essential, so they were shut down. But because they weren't making CO2, we didn't have the ability to stun the animals properly. So we had to make accommodations to find other sources of CO2 to meet that need. And that's a very simple example, but it's it doesn't mean one thing affects the next, it means one thing could affect dozens or even hundreds of different operations. To the ag teachers, I just want to express my gratitude. We need you, we need you to stay the course, to spread the right information. We have a problem with communication about agriculture and the importance of it and where our food comes from. I so appreciate what you do every single day in educating kids in high school so we can get them at the university to continue in this process. And I really want to thank you and encourage you to keep up the good work, keep spreading truth because there's enough misinformation out there and you have to be the source of truth. Oh, my fondest family memory is uh, Christmas morning. And it's kind of a joke in our family, but my mom, you know, will unwrap the gifts and we're cleaning up. And my mom always runs back in the bedroom. She's like, I forgot this gift. I forgot this gift. And so it became a joke in our family for many years. And so that's a very fond memory. The bad thing is, now uh, I found out you don't ever make fun of anyone because I do the same thing. <laughs> and history does repeat itself. But just sitting around having fun with your family, uh, being able to be together for the holidays, and, and of course food. I'm a food person and I enjoy eating and cooking and, and having that experience with the family. Oh dear, uh, you're probably going to be surprised. My favorite concert uh, was Enrique Iglesias and Pitbull. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I really just love their music. Uh, uh, it's just a lot of fun and uh, I say live life to the fullest. I think they carry that and uh, so I had a lot of fun at their concert. You do. Uh, Keith Klein, President and CEO of Core Point Logic. Success. Well, it doesn't really matter where you start or what university you go to, what high school you go to, the people you surround yourself with when you're growing up. It's really about what you want to accomplish. And I use myself as an example. I grew up in a, a middle class neighborhood, went to a, a, a local college in my community, um, didn't, need to, didn't need to leave town or go to a fancy school or an Ivy League college to, to learn what I needed to learn because I think the student controls a lot of their success and the efforts the student put in matter. So really true success is accessible to anybody if you can see it. Talk about that. Yeah, so from a, from a young age, my father always told me that the reason that there was a, a trapped middle class uh, in the country is fear of change and really what he meant by that was you know don't be afraid to put yourself out of your comfort zone take a few calculated risks um, and try to see if you can turn that into something uh, a lot of people believe success is luck and I, I believe that success is uh, the return on the luck that we all have 
and you get that by taking some risks. The, uh, one of the most important things I look for in a, in a young professional coming into my organization is analytical curiosity. So ask a lot of questions, um, ask clarifying questions if you're not sure of something, um, be curious about your environment, and really for a, for a leader in an organization looking to build their staff, what that provides them is a view into how you're going to be as an employee. And the best people on, on the team are the ones that are asking questions and looking to solve problems. Family memory? Fondest family memory. Um, I'm sure you're going to hear this from everyone you ask, but it's always around a Christmas experience. So growing up, big family, lots of aunts and uncles, 20, 30 cousins, and we would gather at my uh, my aunt and uncle's farm in southeast Ohio, and my uncle would dress up like Santa Claus. And we, we'd spend a lot of time around the Christmas tree as kids, and then spend time outside with the horses and the sleighs and the snowmobiles. Um, really great memories of that time of my life. Best concert I've ever been to. Now you're talking to a guy that's been to about 300 concerts in his lifetime. Best concert I've ever been to. Let me go back through the database here. Best concert. Best concert. Wow. That's a tough one. Um, all right. I'm going to go way back into the database here and say the 1988 Monsters of Rock Tour. For the old people that may see this, you may remember it. Uh, an amazing lineup. Uh, arena style seating, waited in line for 12 hours, got front row positioning to see Van Halen, the Scorpions, Metallica, Doc, and a lot of 80s rock bands in there, but some really, really great lineups. That was fun. I was 18. I'm Greg Crouchley. I'm the president of Justin Boot Company, and we make cowboy boots. Yes. There's a lot of opportunity. So many things that companies take for granted and do year, year after year the same way and work on a small portion of things that change uh, doesn't exist anymore. Now, everything that was taken sort of as a stable or predictable has been upheaval so one way or another. And um, that tr creates tremendous opportunity, and especially for the younger folks here today, because they've already lived through some of those non what we call non-traditional methods of shopping, of socializing, of communicating. Whether it's something as simple as Zoom or TikTok, or it's something uh, more complicated like taking remote classes with your teacher and still trying to learn that. Um, there's a lot of opportunity in companies to re-examine so many aspects of the structure that will be more appropriate going forward. And most companies know that 5, 10, 15, 20 percent of what they do each year it's something they wish they didn't have to do or didn't do or should stop doing. But inertia has a tendency and priorities have a tendency to let some of those continue. That has been accelerated greatly and that creates tremendous opportunity for the kids of Texas FFA looking forward and, and, and so forth. That's a really difficult question because it is really a mixture of encouragement and uh, boundaries. And uh, by suggesting and reminding people when we start a meeting that's going to be contentious between people who represent different uh, skill sets in the company, different departments, there's always a tendency for one to take offense if the other one says something that's outside of their lane, so to speak, that might reflect on one of the other divisions, uh, departments. And so we always start with that. And I think it's uh, incumbent on the leadership of the meeting, whoever it might be, myself or one of the uh, executive vice presidents, if they're holding the meeting, to remind everybody constantly where the lines are when somebody begins to step over it. So that, out of respect for each other, you listen to each other, let them finish their thoughts, and you think it over and then respond to it later, rather than the interruption that starts an argument and distracts everybody else in the room from anything constructive. So it does require some firmness that can sometimes be seen as less than, um, uh, what's the right word, less than friendly, but not mean. It's just meant to say, we'll all respect the same rules with each other and let each person finish their thought, even if it touches on you, someone else's area, 
and then we find it. What we found is generally with those kind of rules understood before we start and then having practiced it often, uh, it becomes less of a uh, frustration and an emotional response to what other people say and it becomes more of a pragmatic because you know you're going to get your chance to, to contribute to the, to the question. And you hear other people's thoughts and rarely the thing that triggers one person's reaction is not the main point of what the person was saying. And so that way you don't end up with the, the meeting sidetracked or distracted. I don't know. That's hard to say. Any, I have a lot of like small camping trips or setting up the tent in the backyard and have my little girl, we stay in the tent overnight and pretend we're out in the woods camping and things like that. Just, I think about it all the time. They're more grown up now, so it's not the same, but uh, most of them have a revolve around special moments with my girls. You ever been to? Elton John. I've been to several of them. They are the best. I've seen a lot of great acts, but he's always the best, and I'm hoping the next time he shows up, which is probably going to be the last time, it'll be the best one ever, especially as I'm aging <laughs> and appreciate how much work it takes to do those kind of things at this age.